Hey everybody, let's chat with nobody else's auto. It's time for Toy Tuesday. We are live Tuesday evening at 7 o'clock. We'll give everybody a few seconds to jump on here. Uh, so we'll take a 20 or 30 second pause and then we will get rolling here shortly. Okay, let's go ahead and get rolling tonight. Tonight we're going to play with some blocks. Yep, we're going to play with wooden blocks tonight. Wooden blocks, what's that have to do with toys or memorabilia? Hey, Terry, I do have comments. All right, woohoo. We're going to take that as a good thing. Hopefully they keep rolling. So thanks for the test, Terry, and you did pop right up. So what we've got tonight uh, are some very, very unique pieces of racing history, and they're wooden blocks. Literally, they are wooden blocks. Uh, Jess and Rico are on. Great, awesome. Comments are working. Ooh, thank thankfully. Keep our fingers crossed they continue for once. So uh, I am towards the front part of the shop. Got the door open. Hopefully it's going to work. So um, tonight we've got some wooden blocks that I actually bought at Meekum Indy last year and never have brought them to you guys. They kind of got boxed up, sat in the corner uh, with the intentions of digging them out and going over them because it is really cool stuff and it is definitely racing history. Um, and just kind of forgot about it. But after doing all the stuff from what we brought back from Indy this year, obviously reminded me of what I had and uh, what, uh, and then we still needed to do it. Um, so I uh, got New York on great. All right. It's looking good. Looking good. Everything's going blue. Thumbs are popping up. Comments are popping up. Great. Um, a lot of people have heard of the Offenhauser engines. Offenhauser's obviously they dominated IndyCar back from, you know, starting in the twenties and thirties and all the way up to, uh, you know, after Meyer and Drake bought Offenhauser out uh, the design basically dominated, you know, from the 30s up into the 70s. In fact, I believe from like 1950 to 1960, all top three podium positions at the Indy 500 were offy powered. And I think like from 47 to 64 uh, was always, the winner was always offy powered for like 17 years. But for, from 1950 to 1960, they basically dominated the podium. It, it was offy powered stuff. So, uh, you know, dominate, dominance is almost, you know, not even a good descriptive term to go out and win that many races at one of the prestigious races in the world. To go in and just and not even be touched where you take the podium for 10 straight years and nobody can catch your engines, that says something. So obviously there's a, a long storied history with Offenhauser's design and after Meyer and Drake bought them out. And you got to remember, this stuff started, you know, this design started back in the 20s and 30s. They didn't have CNC machines. They didn't have computers. They didn't have CAD. They didn't have, you know, computer drafting. Uh, this was all done by hand with, a, you know, on a piece of paper. Uh, they didn't put it into the CNC machine and let the machine spit the part out. This stuff all had to be designed and cast. And how did they do it back then? Wooden blocks. They made literally wooden dies to make these parts. And that's what we've got tonight. So uh, some of this stuff, I don't even know what it's for. I mean, you would have to really know Indy cars back in that era to understand what some of these parts or some of these pieces were actually for. But um, we're going to check them out. It's super cool stuff. Like I said, some of it, I don't even know what it is. But the, the craftsmanship and the time and what it took to make these patterns to make the parts that literally dominated IndyCar racing for decades is what we've got tonight. So even though it's blocks of wood, it's pretty cool blocks of wood with an amazing story and an amazing history. So let's, uh, that being said, let's check them out. We'll flip the camera around and I'll just kind of look through them. I'll show you what we've got. Like I said, some of the stuff, I don't even know what it's for. I don't know what pieces they were designed. Some of it we can identify, some of it we can't. I do have a list. Uh, when Meekum sold this stuff, they had the uh, the patterns broken out by lot, and they had a list of what was in each lot. So we'll go through the list and kind of see what we're talking about, and then we'll start looking at some of the pieces and uh, see what you guys think. So hope you enjoy it. Something a little different. Definitely not something you see every day uh, because every one of these was a one-off piece. Everything here was made for one specific part, handmade patterns to, to, to build these IndyCar parts. So... That being said, let's flip things around and take a look. 
as always, if you've got comments, go ahead and throw them up there. We are feeding tonight, apparently. So we're going to take that as a good thing. So if you've got something, go ahead and throw it up. Here's what we've got. This is the tag that was on the stuff that I got. Offenhauser, Meyer and Drake. Offenhauser breather patterns, two styles. Meyer and Drake intake pattern, an unmarked pattern, a 255-520 pattern. I'm not sure what that is. A pattern for a supercharger intake. A pattern for a fuel enrichment. Uh, raceway casting, Hans Hermann pattern. Uh, apparently Hans Hermann was a retired F1 and sports car driver. Never had any time to really do much research on him, but there is some stuff in here marked Hans Hermann. If anybody knows who that is, for sure, throw it up there. Plus a few unmarked uh, Offenhauser and Meyer Drake patterns is what was in this lot. And literally, that's what it is. It's wooden blocks. I bought all this at one, as one lot. And it is just, like I said, the history of what we're looking at here. I don't even understand what it all is. But obviously, when you study what it took to design and build these parts back in the day, this stuff is amazing. So we'll just start right here with this. Looks like a big square block. These things are marked. Meyer and Drake with a number on them. This is a two-piece pattern because there was the part that it was for. Here's another one. Mark Drake Engineering. Fuel Enrichment. This one says Roscoe on it. I don't know what that means. We'll see if there's some markings on this one. This body is not marked. But that's what's inside of it. So whatever that piece was is what it was for. Had dowel pins to ensure the correct placement when the piece was put together. Kind of work our way around the table here. Once again, another set here just looks like a big block. Uh, this had some handwritten labeling on it. Here it is on the bottom, it was inlet manifold. We've got some other markings on this end also inlet manifold so let's flip it open and take a look at what we've got here once again the two halves to form the piece and i'm not that good on indycar this era um i don't know a ton about this stuff or that era of indycar racing but this is just such cool race history we see even these little nubs this stuff all had to be made into the pattern and I think this stuff was all hand carved and it had to be exact. It had to be exact on both sides so that these pieces would work. Another cool piece here. It looks like some sort of an air inlet type piece. Got nubs on it also. I don't know if we've got any markings on this particular piece. Here we go. We've got a number and then Meyer and Drake engine engineering. Next piece we've got here, this is a really cool little piece. It has some sort of uh, clay in it or something. These pieces actually were removable. And once again, I don't really know much about this, but just, I mean, the craftsmanship it took to do this. I don't remember if there were any markings on this piece or not. Nope, that one doesn't really have any sort of markings on it. But just the time and the work it took and all these separate little pieces. Even had the number backwards so it would make show up in the cast. To me, it's, it's amazing stuff. The time, the craftsmanship, you know, what it took to do this stuff back in the day. You know, here was, this was just marked raceway casting. I'm wondering if this was possibly a piece that was maybe never finished. Had some drawing on it, but maybe that was supposed to be something that was never finished. Another interesting piece here, sort of a half moon, half circle type thing. Marked Meyer and Drake on the back. 
but no specific numbers on that piece either. Uh, one of these Hans Hermann pieces, uh, once again, I don't know a lot about who he was. Obviously, interesting IndyCar history there with him. And also looks like possibly part of or piece, possibly an unfinished piece. This next piece we've got here, also a... Let's see, that was on that piece there. I don't remember if that went together or not. But another very interesting piece, obviously with the way this all had to be made... These pieces were added into the circle for the pattern. I don't know if we've got any markings on this. Uh, 9715 Meyer and Drake. And a 160 7 written on it. We've got, uh, once again, Meyer and Drake stamped on the side. Five boxes. So there was probably other pieces that went with this particular piece. But uh, just neat. Another piece over here, this one has a Meyer and Drake stamping on it also, along with a number one. And it's just kind of, a, there again, it doesn't look like much. It looks like a, a round box, but obviously I'm sure it had something in the side of it there. So it was definitely, you know, it had, it was tapered on the bottom the way that rolls in there. So it was definitely important for something. We've got another block here that also appears to be an unfinished piece. It's got stuff sketched out on it. Uh, another Hans Hermann piece, 4L236614. Um, obviously, with sketchings, markings, it looks like this was probably destined to be a pattern that was probably never finished. One more piece out of this batch, and this, I assume, was some sort of an intake runner piece or something like that. I don't really know. But it's an amazing piece when we look at this. The craftsmanship, it's got all these nubs in it, the side edges on it. Okay, Terry's got a comment here. I worked as a plastic pattern maker. Those look like old masters. After a part was made, they put the finished part. Okay, it's not letting me see the rest of your comment, Terry, but that's great. I appreciate you throwing that up there. Maybe it'll shed a little light on some of this stuff for uh, some of the other people that are hanging out with us and watching tonight. But, I mean, it's the time it took to make this stuff and make it right. Like I said, this was, you know, basically zero-tolerance stuff. I mean, these IndyCar engines were obviously super high RPM, especially in the 50s. I mean, there wasn't much room for error on this stuff. And this was all done by hand. You know, hand-carved, hand-made, hand-laid out. And just neat stuff. Like I said, I, I'm not an IndyCar expert. I don't know a ton about the history of IndyCar. Always been more into drag racing. Personally, know a lot more about it. But a collection like this, and like I said, they sold several lots of these at Mecham Indy last year. I was lucky enough to score this lot. Um, I can't remember. They sold about eight or ten lots of this stuff. And wanted to bring at least one batch of it home for my collection. And I did get one batch. That's what I got bought. And that was this batch here we're looking at. So, like I said, it's a, you know somewhat Greek to me. I, I, you know, I I'm not a CNC machinist. I'm not a pattern maker. But the history of what these pieces, where they came from, what they did, stuff like that, really super cool stuff. So that's what I had for tonight. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Something a little different. Um, not necessarily toys. Not necessarily memorabilia. Uh, but some really, really interesting pieces and um, not something you're going to see every day, that's for sure. So I was glad to add that to my collection. Appreciate the blue thumbs. I see some more of those popping up. Thank you guys. Appreciate you guys being here. Glad comments work tonight. Maybe we'll keep rolling with this and, and maybe it's going to work for us for once. Um, Thanks for the comments, Terry. Glad you gave me the test out there and then clarified a little bit on some of this pattern stuff. More hearts and blue thumbs. That's great. I super appreciate it, guys. Um, as always, thanks for being here. Um, uh, like I keep telling you guys, I'm just the lucky one that gets to hang out here and, and talk, talk to you guys and have a chat, talk about some cool stuff, and talk about some history. That's why we're here. We like the history. We enjoy it. We like our cars. We like the related things with it. Like I said, I'm not a big Indy car guy, never have been, but stuff like this, being a car fanatic, being a, a, you know, a car lover and loving the history of this stuff, I couldn't pass this stuff up. I had to bring at least one batch of it home. So I was really fortunate to get one batch of it. 
and it's it's display stuff but man it's got it's got us the story behind it is just awesome you're you just don't get the chance to buy that stuff every day so that's why i went ahead and picked it up i was glad i did i was glad i added it to my collection I was really glad i was able to bring it to you guys tonight hope you enjoyed it as always thanks for stopping by i really appreciate you guys taking a few minutes out of your evening to hang out with me um i know there's a lot of stuff going on in our lives today and the fact that you guys stop for a few minutes and hang out with me means a lot have fun doing these love sharing my stuff love sharing stories uh, love it when guys like Terry jump in with us and, and help out with the story. That's great. And, uh, and, and I'm having fun doing it. I hope you're having fun being here with me. So, uh, tomorrow night, um, that's right, Chad, old is cool. We don't see enough anymore. That's why I try to save some of the stuff both in my own personal collection and also to, you know, as I get extra stuff to try to sell some of it off to help add to other people's collections. So, um, and that's why we're on toy. That's why we're doing Toy Tuesday. That's why we're doing Toys and Memorabilia live on Tuesday nights because it's fun. Um, tomorrow night we've got uh, actually another section from my yard, the yard that I've had as I've been sorting. We're going to do some A body GM stuff, some Skylarks and Chevelles. So we're going to see one group of that that I've been getting sorted out, and then we'll bring you some more cars from Pioneer Village on Friday night. I hope you guys are enjoying those videos. Awesome place. If you haven't caught those, be sure to go back and catch those. So, as always, if you have specific questions about vehicles or parts, give me a call. That's the only way to, so we can have a conversation to know what you've got, where you're going with your build, and if I've, known, if I've got anything here, they'll maybe be able to help you out. So, as always, thanks for being here, everybody. It looks like we are caught up on comments. I haven't seen anything else pop up. I'm just glad that some of them popped up tonight and things worked. So, thanks for being here tonight. Really appreciate it. Hope you guys enjoyed the uh, Offenhauser and Meyer and Drake IndyCar engine pattern segment. Uh, definitely something a little different. Probably not going to see it again tonight so anywhere else. So hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow night, and uh, we'll catch you later. Thanks a lot, everybody.